working on a large Stuart model steam plant, this is part two, setting the valve timing of the duplex pump. Once upon a time, when I bought this from the son of my late friend Bernard Walker, it was fine. But now, as I showed in the last episode, the valves in the water chest are a bit of a mess. I'll be sorting that out in due course. It's time now to have a look at the timing, because the timing should not have altered, but it's not right at all. In musical terms, the valve timing has sort of a dotted beat. The beats are not even, and really they should be. I'll be showing a pump later on in this video that was built by a very good friend of mine, and it's as near to perfection as perfection can be. First of all, I'm going to loosen the lock nuts. And as you can clearly hear, the valve timing, even though I've moved the position of the valves, is not really good. It's still skipping. So first of all, I'll just make sure I don't have any tight spots. A bit of oil wouldn't go amiss. And this oil is my usual Hallett's Oils lubricating oil. Really good stuff from a company in Liverpool called Hallett Oils. Not forgetting the cylinder lubrication, I've put a drop of it also in the main fitting from the airline. And this will be carried into the cylinder in due course. In this clip I'm trying to show you the fact that you do not need these valve adjustment points to be tight up against the levers. I noticed one thing about this pump, and this wasn't apparent when I first owned it. The position of the two gunmetal blocks on the piston rods are not the same, and to make this pump work properly, these two gunmetal blocks need to be positioned accurately, exactly midway of the stroke, exactly the same distance from each end of the travel of the piston rod. These two gunmetal blocks are very important, they control the valve events. And what I'm currently doing is adjusting them and putting them in the right position by releasing the pressure from the two pinch bolts on the top of each of them and then making it so that both of the blocks are in exactly the same place relative to the stroke of the pump. And that seems to be a little bit better. I've only roughly adjusted the positions of these two blocks so I think now it's time to do it properly and measure the distance at each end rather than just doing it by eye. Before I do that though, I'm going to move the range of the valve actuation out of range so it shouldn't run well at all when I do this. But at least it will give me some idea where I need to set the positions of these valves. This entire steam plant is covered in cat hairs, it's driving me nuts. And one thing that's on the agenda very shortly is to clean this pump thoroughly using a tub of white spirit and a paintbrush to get rid of all the dirt and filth and what's left of the cat. The pump's starting to sound a little better, it's not skipping as much, but both the steam pistons and the water pistons are hitting the cylinder end caps at both ends. But it's worth mentioning at this moment the pump is not working properly anyway because the water chest is in pieces. Here's a video extract from when I ran the pump before I sold it to this customer and as you can see it was very even in every way and very clean. A friend of mine called Roger built one of these pumps and this is it, look at this one. These valve events are perfection, it sounds like a locomotive, it was a lovely engine, I didn't buy it from him, he sold it on eBay. What is obvious though is that Roger spent quite a lot of time setting up the valve timing to get it to run as well as this. And this of course is running on steam. And meanwhile back in my workshop by way of an experiment I've moved the valve timing way out of adjustment. And as you can see in here the engine isn't running well at all. It's a very fine adjustment though on these valve spindles, you don't need to alter it very much to make the engine either not run or run reasonably well. I really am not going to move into obsess mode at this moment in time. I'll save that for when I've got the water chest back together and it's connected to a water supply, so then I'll be able to put the engine under load and see how it performs. All I'm doing at the moment is just playing with it for the purposes of the tutorial. 
The man who built this engine, the late Bernard Walker, was a very good engineer, so I would think that the valve timing inside the steam chest is probably OK. And with a bit of luck, the threaded parts of the valve spindles should be about the same at both ends, when the setting is perfect. Unlike the gunmetal blocks, which once again I'm making a very slight adjustment to, I don't think I tightened the pinch bolts sufficiently the last time I messed about with it. This time though, I'm applying a bit more pressure to the bolts. Being very careful not to shear them off, that would not be good. It would take quite a lot of work to rectify that. I'm using the tip of my scriber to measure the distance at each end of the stroke. And now everything would appear to be OK, and it's time to finally nip up the pinch bolts. Once everything was tightened up, it was time for a test. That's a lot better. It's still skipping a little bit at lower speed. But then again, I haven't adjusted the valves as you can see at the top. They're not the same at both sides. These valve spindles must not be tightened up against the parts that move them. For this pump to work correctly, there needs to be quite a lot of float between the operating arms and the nuts and washers on the valve spindles. Either way, as I said earlier, I'm not going to finalise the timing. I'm just going to get it somewhere near. I can only really time this engine when it's pumping water. But as you can hear, it's now starting to sound much more metronomic. And far better than it was about an hour ago. The water chest and the cover are just loosely placed in position for the effect. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.